Chapter 25 is called Nutrition, Metabolism, and Temperature Regulation. I'm not going to get real in-depth on any of these topics, but give you a basic overview and understanding of these. And in fact, I'm not going to cover temperature regulation. Uh, we're going to focus on nutrition and metabolism. And in fact, we're going to do metabolism first and then talk a little bit about nutrition. So we start with basic understanding of what, of what we mean by metabolism. Uh, in general, we, we say metabolism is all the chemical reactions that are occurring in the body. Uh, some of those reactions are breaking molecules down into smaller molecules in order to extract energy. Uh, that's called catabolism. And then anabolism is kind of the opposite, where we're taking small molecules, using energy to big, build bigger molecules. So the combination of catabolism and anabolism is called metabolism. Uh, we break it down into the specific um, molecules, so the macromolecules of carbohydrates. We'll talk a little bit about you know, what we mean by carbohydrate metabolism. Then we'll get into lipid metabolism and protein metabolism. Uh, then we're going to do just kind of an introduction to nutrition. Again, I'm not going to get into real details. Um, there's a whole course called nutrition that many of you may have already taken or might choose to take. Um, I highly recommend taking a nutrition course um, because uh, everyone should be fully aware of, you know, what nutrients we need, how much of those nutrients we need, and what they're used for in the human body. And a lot of times people are looking for these shortcuts to lose weight and, you know, diet fads. But if you want to know the diet that works, it's in the nutrition textbook. All right. Um, that information, being well educated in nutrition, is the best way uh, to discover the the diet that uh, is most healthy for you. Um, so basically under that heading of nutrition, we're going to, you know, talk briefly about, you know, the, the big macromolecules, carbohydrate, lipid, and protein, and how much we might need uh, in our diet. Then we'll talk about some of the minerals that are vital to our body, and then some of the vitamins that are important for our body. So a lot of this is review. We've actually talked about minerals throughout AMP1 and AMP2, and we've we've talked about vitamins. So it's just kind of a bring those all together and remind ourselves uh, what some of these important minerals are for and vitamins. So this is our kind of introduction to metabolism. Uh, basic definition is that metabolism are, is all the chemical reactions that are taking place in the body. Uh, many of those reactions are generating energy, and then other reactions are using that energy. Um, and again, we, we can kind of divide metabolism into two sides. We've got the catabolic reactions, uh, so that those are reactions that break down larger complex molecules into smaller molecules, and that's typically how we're going to get the ATP. All right, then. We're going to use that ATP to combine small molecules to form larger complex molecules, which is called uh, anabolism. So you have catabolic reactions and anabolic reactions. So they work well together. Uh, this is a basic diagram showing that. So um, catabolism would be when we're taking, you know, larger molecules, breaking them down, and that's going to result in the production of ATP. Then we're going to use that ATP to drive anabolic reactions, uh, so build larger molecules. When we talk about carbohydrate metabolism, we're typically talking about glucose. Uh, how are we utilizing glucose? Where are we getting glucose? Uh, how are we storing glucose? Um, what are we doing with this glucose? All right, so it's basically what's glucose all about? All right, we call that carbohydrate metabolism. So what do we need glucose for? The number one thing is 
energy production, ATP production, cellular respiration. And we know that. We've talked about that. We talked about it in the context of the respiratory system in that we need oxygen along with glucose to generate a lot of our energy. All right. Uh, we also use glucose for a, uh, amino acid synthesis. Uh, we can store glucose in the form of glycogen. So we call that glycogenesis, uh, and that's largely done in the muscle and liver. So we store glucose as glycogen. We can also use glucose to form triglycerides and then store that energy in adipose tissue. So some of the kind of fancy words we use, so notice at the center is glucose, and glucose can be stored in the form of glycogen. So that's that glycogenesis. Then we can release that glucose, so we can break down glycogen and form glucose again, glycogenolysis. And then over here is the concept that we can, we, we can actually make glucose from non-carbohydrate molecules. So lactic acid, amino acids, glycerol can all be converted into glucose. And that's called gluconeogenesis. And that can be done by your liver as well as your kidneys. Now you might not remember any of this, but we have talked about this in previous chapters. So that's what we mean by carbohydrate metabolism. What do we mean by lipid metabolism? Well, this is the formation of lipids or the utilizing of lipids. And this often centers around triglycerides um, as well as cholesterol. Uh, so lipogenesis is the synthesis of triglycerides. Again, we might have excess glucose. So in order to deal with that glucose, we're going to store it. But then if we're going to store it for long term, we can convert it into triglycerides. All right, so lipogenesis is the formation of triglycerides. Lipolysis is the breakdown of triglycerides. So if we're forming triglycerides, that's a form of anabolism, right? We're building a larger molecule. If we're breaking down triglycerides to utilize that energy, that's catabolism of triglycerides. All right? And I think we know it, you know, lipids are, uh, they're nonpolar, hydrophobic, um, and in order to move these lipids around in the body, we need to form lipoproteins. And this is a topic we just finished covering in the previous chapter. All right, so we learned about lipoproteins. Uh, chylomicrons being the ones that are in your lymph, uh, VLDL, LDL, and HDL. All right, and I'm just going to move right on to the next slide because it should look very familiar to you. Uh, this slide was in the previous chapter on the digestive system. All right, so again, you should already kind of know lipoprotein. So obviously they're very involved in the overall concept of lipid metabolism. Uh, but these are how we're moving some of these lipids around in the body. What do we mean by protein metabolism? Well, that's going to be either breaking down proteins, all right, and that's a way that we can break, break down the proteins and then maybe utilize the amino acids for energy. So that would be a form of protein catabolism, all right. We can utilize them for energy. Or we can build bigger proteins. So that would be protein anabolism, all right. Again, breaking down or building. Oop, doggies are barking. All right. Um, when we undergo protein catabolism, uh, one thing that we need to do with those amino acids, if the plan is to utilize those amino acids for energy, we need to deaminate the amino acids. So look at the word amino acid. Well, they have what's called an amino group. All right, every amino acid has a group that's known as the amino group. And in order for us to use that amino acid for energy, uh, that imi uh, amino group has to be removed. And we call that deanimation. And um, when the liver does that, it produces the urea as a waste product. All right, so that's part of this 
protein catabolism. Protein anabolism is, again, building new proteins. All right, so what do you need? Well, typically you're going to need a gene because that's going to be uh, housed the information for how to make that protein. You're going to transcribe that gene and then translate that gene in order to build new functional proteins in the human body. Um, so that's what we mean by protein metabolism. So again, utilizing a protein and an amino acid for energy, and we first have to remove the amino group, or using amino acids to build new proteins. All right, next video, we'll just separate this chapter into two videos. The first video was on metabolism, and this next video will be on nutrition.